I was back in Stonetown, the biggest city on the island of Zanzibar in Tanzania. Today I would go to a fishing market, buy some fish and make local food from only natural ingredients. Hello everybody and welcome to another video. I'm here in Stonetown in uh, Zanzibar. It's an island off of the east coast of Africa. This is Mucha, Mucha from, uh, what is the name of the company? Global Encounter Tours. Global Encounter Tours and he will be taking me on a trip today. Uh, we will be starting out uh, by going to a fish market, right? Yeah, the capital fish market. A uh, few minutes drive from Stone Town. Okay, so we will be getting in the car here and heading out. I had been invited by Global Encounters to experience the true culture of Tanzania. The first stop of the day was the famous fishing market where boats come in every day with their catch. The name Stone Town originated after Arab traders and slavers constructed large parts of the town by stone in the 19th century. So now we just got out here. This is the fish market. We will be getting some fish here and then uh, preparing some local food of Zanzibar. So this will be a really interesting trip. Uh, we're walking through the fish auction here and this is where you can buy all the fish that they catch. Welcome to uh, the capital fishing market. Every day is another day. Actually we don't know what we are going to see or what the fishermen catch because the tide is this the season depend upon the size the, the tide of the moon. We don't know actually what we're going to see. So the auction comes according to the catch of the day. So we can see barracuda, tuna and uh, other kind of fish. The local fishermen had started to come in with the catch and the auction was soon about to start. Here we have all the boats also and this is where they come to fix the boats. He said that every three months they have to repair the boats. You can see some people repairing the boats here because they go fishing every day, right? Every day fishing. We came closer and I could see a swordfish that must have been 2 meters or 8 feet long. So uh, when a new fisherman comes, um, they bring the fish here and then they start yelling a bit to, to get people's attention and then the auction starts. So now we're gonna buy some fish here. We're gonna participate in the auction and uh, he's teaching me here how to buy the fish actually, and what to say. Actually there are three ways to participate in the yeah. auction. Okay. Sometimes you can raise up your hand, it means you push your eyes the price. Okay. You can nod your hand or sometimes you can participate in both vocabulary Actually okay. you can push the price by number. They got the cash, they won the auction. Now you also got some octopus. We have the barracuda, barracuda. And, uh, red snapper, and here we have some octopus. We got the fish we wanted and then left it to be cleaned by some locals. They have been cleaning the fish here and also they uh, massage the octopus and hit it because that makes it, um, you don't have to cook it as long if you do that beforehand. We put the catch in the car and was about to head out on a 30 minute drive up to their spice farm in the jungle and the highest point of the island. I asked a lot of questions along the way and was really excited to finally learn more about the culture in Tanzania. It was nice and cold inside the car and we were going through some green areas with lots of palm trees on the sides. Now we had arrived to their spice farm hidden in between some thick greenery and incredible nature.
we are now here at Kidichi Kitchen, Gen right? Experience. And yeah. the Sunset Bar Spice Farm. Yeah, and Heritage. <laughs> and Heritage. We drove for 30 minutes yeah. up to the highest point here in Sunset Bar. Yeah. And it's like a jungle. Everything is really green. We have some nice flowers. You can hear the roosters also. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the first thing we do is going harvesting. Harvesting? Yeah. Okay. And we will also be looking at the spices. Yeah, of course. We walked through the forest and the walkway was canopied by overhanging trees. At the end of the walkway was the Kidichi kitchen. So here we have the spice farm. And uh, apparently they have cinnamon and uh, black pepper and a bunch of other spices here that they will be showing me. I think they started cooking the food over there that uh, we bought earlier in Stone Town. They have a big kitchen and uh, as you could see it also is really a huge and open area here and the palm trees are huge. Really green also so there must be a lot more rain here I'm guessing in this area. The fish and octopus had been put in baskets and also had a quick look at all the veggies, fruits and spices that they had. But soon we would go out for ourselves and see where it all comes from. So here we are now gathered with the crew and uh, he will be introducing everybody. <laughs> yeah, you so who do we have here? Yeah, you almost welcome to Kijiji Kitchen Experience. This is our platform and this is our team. As you can see, here we have uh, the main chef. That's me. We have the assistants. Ali. And uh, Ramla is also our wonderful assistant. And uh, this is assistant chef. So we have two chefs actually today. Okay. So we are going to see, we are going to show you how our authentic food and the experience. Perfect. They use a traditional stove here with uh, charcoal. And uh, yeah, it's like a little fire on the stove, you can see here. So now I got a little basket here and we're going out to harvest. Harvest something, but we don't know what yet. Every harvest is different, right? Yeah, every day is another day. <laughs> this is Abdul, the farmer. Yes. So he's going to take us now to go and harvest. <laughs> yeah, you can smell it because, okay. because most of the leaves smell similar. I can smell a little bit. Can you eat? Can I eat it? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the farmer, Abdul, took down the first spice, muscat nut. Yeah. This is muscat nut? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. In English. Muscat nut. Okay. And then you eat this part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we use this red mass mm -hmm. as a spices. See? Ah, okay. Yes. But in Europe, they are always sold separate. Uh -huh. Here we have oh, avocado. William, you can come and pick it up. This one. Yeah. Yeah, good. We got some avocados and there were also regular bananas and also red bananas. The next thing I would try was a lychee fruit that grows all over the forest. It's said to prevent heart disease and cancer and diabetes. You eat the inside that is really sweet but protected by some kind of red shell. So they have so much stuff here just growing out in the jungle. Just try this. I, I can't remember the name, but it's really good. I've had it before. Nom, nom, nom. We kept walking and the farmer climbed up in a tree to get the next fruit called Carambola. Also really sweet and tasty fruit. <laughs> Okay, tupa tupa. <laughs> this is the spinach. We're gonna cut the spinach now. <laughs> yeah, so how do we cut it? At it the bottom? Yeah. All the way down or? Yeah. Or all of it? No. One. One for you. <laughs> <laughs> Two. How many okay. do we get? Uh, we, it is enough for. Two. For two yeah. Okay. Thank oh, mitatu. Another one. Three. Three, yeah. <laughs> Here we have the lemon tree. Mm. Mm. Uh, you jump. Or yeah, if you are tall enough, you can jump. 
<laughs> Maybe I'll take this one. It's smaller though. Yeah. I'm not really doing it, but maybe I should try again. But you're taller, you can hmm? take. Good. Yeah. Here you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what is this? Is it the breadfruit? Yeah, it is a breadfruit. So every day you just come and check which one it is already full grown. Yeah. That's why it is very difficult to plan your menu at home. So you just come checking which is ready, then you harvest for your ingredient. Yeah. This is how you make your day. We took some breadfruit and started walking out to a more open area. It's quite hot here. It was more dry than usual, but the rainy season is soon about to start in Tanzania. Yeah. What is this? Papaya. 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 Here we had papaya, which is a really tasty yeah. and sweet fruit also. So here we have the chili, right? Yeah, small but the hottest one. The hottest one, chili. Yeah, one chili can make a kilo of masala. A kilo? A kilo of masala. <laughs> so yeah, we call pili pili ho ho. Oh. Because when you eat, you must go ho ho. That's why we call pili pili ho ho. But you said that you use it to yeah. prevent the monkeys Yeah, traditionally from the fruit. we use it. We boil it, mm. then we brush the fruit. Ah. When the monkey come and taste the fruit, they go ho ho. <laughs> Yeah, it's super hot. So they don't want to eat it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just quit from the fruit ever. Sometimes if you put it in a packet... Mm. I will try it. <laughs> Not too bad. Yeah, yeah, it's spicy. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Ho, 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 ho! Ho, 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 ho! have a tree, the 40 tree. Mm -hmm. It can cure 40 diseases, right? Yeah, we call it Nim tree or Queenie. So we even uh, Dr. David Livingstone, the one who helped abolishing of slavery and slave trade when he uh, suffering from malaria, he used it to cure disease. Oh, wow. Yeah, so the tree is super strong. We're gonna try it to see I can be healthy for the rest of my life now. Mm. That's yeah, pretty good. Mm -hmm. And you eat it just like this, or in yeah, tea, like tea. Yeah, or you can boil it. Boil it. Mm. Mm. What does this do? Yeah. We call uh, Ilang Ilang. Ilang Ilang. Yeah, original from Mauritius. In Mauritius, mm -hmm. they export the flower in France. Ah. In France, they use the flower for making Chanel number no. five. Oh, really? One among <laughs> the expensive perfume. Wow. Chanel perfume. Wash. Yeah. So here in Zanzibar, we use the same flower making Chanel number no. zero. <laughs> Chanel number no. Zanzibar, free from chemical. We mix with coconut oil, oh, then wow. we make it. Mm -hmm. I can actually smell it. I have I have bad sense of smell, mm -hmm. but this I can smell. Mm. It was quite an experience to walk around in the jungle. Everything was so preserved and untouched. Yeah, so when you take the bark out of the tree, mm. after three weeks, then it's recover. Ah, okay. You wait for a few more days, and uh, mm. you come and harvest again. Nice. Yeah, but we also we use a cinnamon root. Cinnamon root? Oh. Yeah, as an antibiotic. He's taking the root now. Yeah, sure. As antibiotic. Antibiotic, really? Yeah. Wow. So you can smell it. Yeah. Here is the cinnamon root. So here we have black pepper. Can you believe it? It grows on a huge tree. It's like a peppercorn. So we can have more than one peppers from the same peppercorn. Oh, wow. When it is young, always it is green. Oh. When it is mature, it becomes into red. Oh. Where do you get yeah. the little fruit? We can find them. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. This is the kitomboa with the rice, right? Yeah, made from rice. Rice is really good. And the cutlass is the other. Last uh, is right over here. Cutlass, kitomboa, it's like um, rice. This is sugary cake, and this is salty. Mm. Kitomboa is mm -hmm. uh, potato. Mm -hmm. Really good. And uh, fish. Mm, yeah, it's salty. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so yeah. good. So you have good combination, mm. actually. I like yeah, this one a lot. Uh, all spice. This is the tea, and it's so good. One of the best teas I've ever had. There's black pepper and uh, cinnamon, cinnamon, right? In this. And ginger. Ginger also. So yeah. so and flavorful. Clove and uh, lemongrass. Mm. Ah, the tea is really good, and also this mm -hmm. was my favorite. So good with um, uh, garlic and um, 
Ginger. What was it? Like? Ginger. And cumin. Cumin. Mm. So good. Yeah. <laughs> so now I have the apron on and the cooking can begin. They're gonna show me how to do it. I'm gonna do it on my own, but um, they're gonna show me how to do it. We sat down on a special chair that would grind coconut meat. So this is a special chair yeah. for doing it. Yeah, for grating. Oh, okay. See how you hold? Oh, okay. You hold like this, then you just you grind it side to side. See, you keep it rolling. Okay. coconut powder would later be used as coconut milk and mixed in with the plantain that I was cutting out at the moment. A plantain is similar to a banana but much bigger. They were cutting the spinach and also preparing something called cassava which is similar to a potato but much more dense. Cassava, cassava. The cassava was in the pot and the octopus steaming on the stove. So the cooking is going down now and uh, I just cut some plantain and we also grinded the coconut to get the coconut powder and you can see the fish also um, mixed with uh, ginger I think and then uh, garlic and uh, the octopus is boiling. There will be an octopus soup <laughs> and also we have spinach and um, cassava. Now this is the coconut milk that goes into the plantain, yeah? Water was being put on top of the coconut powder that created the coconut milk. Now the fish was frying on the pan and the rooster was also getting a bit hungry. Now we are getting the garlic and uh, you're not supposed to take all the peel off, right? Yeah. Because you get a better flavor if you keep yeah. some of it. About half of the peel of the yeah. garlic you're supposed to keep yeah. to get the best flavor. Mm -hmm. The food is cooking here behind me and they're also making their own juice from all the fruits that grow here in the garden. Um, yeah, we're gonna go over there and look at that now when they make the fruit juice. <laughs> fruit juice. <laughs> here they used passion fruit, a bit of honey and water to create the juice. Fried onion was being taken out and mixed in to the rice together with carrots to create the veggie rice. Here is another interesting part. We have something called woody. woody yeah. This is woody and um, women use it, right? Yeah. Uh, and they put it on the burner. Here we have a little burner. Yeah. And it start, you get a really nice smell. It's made out of some kind of flowers and um, sugar. Yeah. <laughs> when the food is ready. Yeah, when the food is ready, so when the women or wives want to get ready, yeah. welcoming their husband, yeah. they just burn the woody. Yeah. So sometimes they just put their clothes everywhere around uh -huh. the houses. So it means the food is ready. The food then is ready. the husband will come, they enjoy okay. the food and the uh -huh. nice smell actually. Very nice. <laughs> Here they also showed me sometimes how they get water from the spring. They have a spoon with half of a coconut at the end of it to get the water up and then a lid that is being put on the ceramic pot. So now it's finally time to eat and we will be looking at all the food here to see what we have. Here is the shrimp and potatoes and that's the veggie rice. Yeah? Yes, vegetable rice. Calamari with cumin and uh, habanero, I think, spices. Mm -hmm. And chili. Chili. Mm -hmm. And here we have uh, shrimp or crappie. Here we have the banana and coconut. Mm -hmm. And here is fish, fish yeah? Yeah. With fried the garlic. Fish. Fried fish. Yeah, barbecue, yeah. And it's potato. Mm -hmm. No, cassava. No? Cassava, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And here is uh, salad. Fruit, yeah. So the food was so good that I forgot to speak about it. <laughs> this was the Kitichi experience. Okay, and I would like to say a big thanks to all the people here. 
they were, were very friendly and the food was really amazing. Thank you. So thank you. <laughs> thank Big you. The food had been really great, but the day was not over yet. We got into the car and went back to Stone Town, where I would learn how to play the drums. I was about to meet somebody that had worked with the government and also played the drums for more than 35 years. Traditional drum in Zanzibar. Yes. Professional. Nice. You're a professional drum? Oh, nice. <laughs> How many drums do you have usually? Three. Uh, seven. Oh, you know, seven. Seven drums. Ah, oh, okay. Three, four, five, seven, <laughs> eleven. Ah, yeah. Okay. Uh, many yeah. drums. He was teaching me the basic rhythm of the drums. I will never forget the smile of this man. He was so passionate and happy about playing the drums. So it's the end of this video and uh, you can go on this tour if you uh, book it from the website. And uh, yeah, I really liked it. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> the drumming class was also really fun. The guy was so happy. You could really tell that he loved playing the drums. But as always, thanks for watching the video and uh, if you liked it, please leave it a thumbs up, post a comment and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. So see you in the next video. So by the way, also this is where I've been staying here in Stone Town. <laughs> Um, pretty nice little hotel. Thanks again for watching. I want to reach 100,000 subscribers. So if you want to help out, all you have to do is click the subscribe button.